Hi there. In this video, we will create a notes application using ASP.NET Web API as our backend and we will use Entity Framework to save our changes to the database and we will use a SQL Server database. On the frontend side, we will use JavaScript and call our ASP.NET Web API. This will be a fun tutorial and we will focus more on CRUD operations in ASP.NET Web API. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get more content like this one. With that said, let's get started. I have a folder in which I will create my ASP.NET 6 Web API and I will open Visual Studio to create my new .NET Web API project. So I will click on this button that says create a new project. From the templates page, I want to select the, the Web API template. I have the filters as C sharp, all platforms and all project types. So from the list over here, I will select the ASP.NET Core Web API template and I will click on next. From this screen, I can give the project and solution name and also a location. So I will copy the location of the folder that I want to create my web API in and I will paste it in the location over here. And the project name would be notes app dot api and from the solution name i will just take out the word dot api so our project name is notes app dot api and the solution name is just notes app with that i will click on next from this screen we can select the framework authentication type and other settings I want to have the latest framework, which is .NET 6 as of the time of recording this video. And I will keep other settings as it is. With that, I will click on the create button to create this new ASP.NET Core Web API. Visual Studio has created us a new API and we have the controllers folder over here, which only has the default weather forecast controller. That's some sample data. So I will create a new controller for myself for this notes application. But before we do that, let's quickly find out what we have to create and what our domain will look like. We want to create a notes application where the user would be able to submit a form which has all the information for that note and we will display all the notes similar to how Google notes are. And for that, we will have the ID field, which will be a unique identifier. We will have the title, which will be the heading of that note and the description, which will be the full text of that note. We will also color code this note. So I have the color hex, which will be a string and the created date. And we will perform CRUD operations that is create, read, update and delete on these notes and using entity framework, we would be able to create or read or delete these notes from the SQL Server database. So let's come back to our application and create this domain model. So inside the project, I will right click and add a new folder. So add a new folder and I will call this models. And inside the models folder, I will create a domain model folder. So right click on the models folder, add a new folder called domain model. So we have the domain models folder, which will have the domain model for this project. So we only have one domain model, which will be notes. So I will right click on the folder, add a new domain model. That is a class and I will call it a note because this is a singular entity and a collection of these note objects or classes will, will be classified as nodes. So now it's time to create properties for this note domain model. And as we saw earlier in the, uh, in the domain model diagram, we want to create the ID first. So PROP to create a new property and that's a shorthand. And the property would be of type GUID, which is a unique identifier. And the name would be just ID. After that, we want the title, which will be a string type. 
and the name of the property would be title. Similar to title, we will have the description of the note. And after that, we will have a color hex. So color hex, which is of type string, which will store the hex code for the color or the background color of this note. And finally, we will have the date created. So PROP, and this is of type date time. And the property name is date created or created date, or you can call it something else as well. So with that, we have our domain model ready. It's now time to install entity framework and that's a NuGet package. So I will right click on dependencies, go to manage NuGet packages. And inside the browse tab over here, I will search and install two packages. The first package I would search for is the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server package. So I will copy that and browse it and search for it. This is over here. So I will select and install it. Once that is done, I will install the next package, which is Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools. And this is responsible for creating migrations for Entity Framework. And this package will actually is responsible for creating our new database and tables. So I will select that and click on install. So both our packages are installed now. So I will close the NuGet package manager. It's now time to create a DB context class and in entity framework core, the DB context basically acts as a bridge between the data and entity framework. So the DB context class is responsible to get data from the SQL server database to us inside this application. So I will create another folder. So right click on project, add a new folder. I will call this data. And inside this data folder, I will create a new class. So add a new class and I will call this the notes DB context. This notes DB context class will inherit from the DB context base class. So DB context. And if I press control dot to get the missing references, I have to import this using statement, which is Microsoft dot entity framework core. And that's the package we just installed. With that, we have to create a constructor for this class so that we can pass the connection string from the program file later on. So I will click on this context file and press control dot and I will use this shortcut generate constructor with the options parameter. So we can see that the constructor of this class is getting the options parameter and it is then passing it to the base class. After that, we have to create a property which is which will be of type DB set and that property will be used to interact with the table that we will create in the database. So I will create a property and this will be of type db set and db set will take a type which is the domain model that we created which is note so it will be db set of type note press control dot to get this from the domains model folder and the name of the property would be notes and this will be the same name of the table that will get created as part of the entity framework core migrations. We have now created the DB context file. It's now time to create the connection string inside the app settings.json so that we can later consume it inside the program.cs file. So I will come to app settings.json and after the allowed host, I will put a comma and in the next line, I will create a new key for connection strings. And inside that object, I will have a connection string for the notes application. So I can say this is the notes app connection string. And with that key, now I have to give the value of the connection string. The value for the connection string will look like this. We have to pass in the server information 
the database information and then trusted underscore connection is equal to true. So I will copy that and paste it inside the string over here. And now I will replace the values with actual values. So I will open my SQL Server Management Studio and I have installed a local instance of SQL Server inside my machine. So the server name that I have installed SQL Server with is localhost backslash ms sql server 01 so i will take this as my server name because i am able to connect to the server or to the local instance of sql server using this server name so i will click on connect just to test it and it does connect so i will come back to the application and put the server name over here so make sure you paste the server name that you have installed in your machine. After that, we have the database name and we don't have any database for this application. So I will create or I will give a new name to this database. So the database name will be notes DB. And if I open Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and expand on databases for this SQL Server, I don't have any database which is with the name NotesDB. So Entity Framework Core will give or install one uh, with this name. So I will just name the convention NotesDB. And then trusted underscore connection is equal to true. So we have now defined a connection string. So now it's time to inject the DB context inside the program.cs file so that we can use it inside our application later on. So I will open the program.cs file. And in here, after I add the services for Swagger Gen, I will say builder.services.add DB context and it takes a type and the type of the db context that we have in our application is the notes db context so i will specify notes db context press control dot to get the missing references inside the brackets it will take an options builder so options lambda expression we will say options dot use sql server so use sql server and press control dot to get this from the entity framework core package and this use sql server option will take a connection string which is over here and it's of type string and we can get the connection string from the app settings.json so we will use the builder object again so builder dot configuration dot get connection string and now we can specify the name of the connection string. So the name of the connection string in my application was notes app connection string. So I will give that to the method over here. After that, I can close this and finally close this whole code as well. So by this way, we have injected the notes DB context inside our services collection and now we are able to use it inside our controllers now that we have uh, injected the db context inside the program.cs file it's now time to run entity framework core migrations so that it can create the new database and the new table so for that i will come to tools and nuget package manager and open package manager console and in here i want to execute two commands one is add hyphen migration and inside that i will give a space and inside double quotes i will give a text of the migration name so i will say this is the initial migration and press enter to create this migration the migration has been created and it's basically a c sharp version of the SQL that it wants to create inside the SQL Server database. And now as part of the second uh, method or second command that I want to give, I want to say update hyphen database. 
so that it can update the database with the migration that it created. So I'll press enter on that as well. And it is basically running the migration that we created on the database. So it's now time to refresh the database to see if it has created a new database for us. So I will refresh this server. And if I expand on databases, I can see the new notes DB database, which has the notes table inside it. So with that, it's now time to create a new controller, which will be the notes controller. And we will uh, be adding new action methods and perform CRUD operations on this notes table. To create a new controller, I will right click on the controllers folder click on add and go to controller. From here, I will select the API option and I will choose the API controller empty and click on add. It then asks us for the name of the controller and I will call this the notes controller and I will add this controller. So we can see we get the API control attribute on the controller and also the route which goes to API forward slash controller name, which is notes. So the full path for this application becomes API forward slash notes. Now we want to create controller action methods and basically web API endpoints for our uh, JavaScript client to consume. And we will first start with creating a new node. So for that, I will create a new action method, public I action result, and this will be add node. Let's annotate this method with the HTTP post keyword. And I don't want to give any other route because when I'm coming to this route, which is API forward slash notes on the HTTP post verb, then I want to add a new note. Now I want to get the values from the client. So I will create a request object. So I will come to the models folder and I will create another folder. So add a new folder and I will call this the data transfer models. So I have created the DTO folder, which stands for uh, data transfer objects. And I will create a new request object for this HTTP post method. So I will right click on this folder, add a new class. And I will call this add note request. Click on add. Inside this request object, we will have similar properties to the note domain model, but we don't want the client to pass the ID to us. So I will have the title description, color hex and date created as well. So I will copy that and paste it in the add node request. I actually don't even want the date created property because the server will define the date created date time. So we will just have the title description and the color hex as part of the request. So now to the controller action method, I can have the parameter of the add note request. So add note request control dot to get this from the DTO folder. And this will be the add note request. Now inside this function, I want to save the the note to the database using entity framework and entity framework knows about the node domain model. It doesn't know anything about the node DTO model. So I want to first convert the DTO to domain model. So I will create a new node domain model. So var node is equal to new node and this node comes from domain models. And in here, I will specify the title, which is coming from the add note request dot title. Then we have the description again coming from the request. And we also have the color hex. Add note request dot color hex. 
and then we will define the date created property to date time dot now and entity framework will define the id automatically so now it's time to use the db context to create this node inside the database so i will use constructor injection so i will create a constructor for this class first ctor to create a constructor and now i will inject the notes db context press control dot to get the references and give it a name let's say db context and then i want to create a private field so that i can use it inside the add note method so press control dot and create and assign this field so now i can use this private read only field inside this action method so i will say db context dot notes dot add and this is the method that entity framework core exposes us to create a new node and it takes the node which is of type domain model and we have that over here so i will just pass the node object to entity framework core so that it can save the node to the database after I have written the statement, I also want to save the changes so that finally Entity Framework Core can save the changes to the database. So I will write DB context dot save changes. Once this is done, we will have the ID created for this new node and we will return all this response back to the client. So as part of the return, we can say return and OK response which is a status 200 response and I can pass the note object back to the client so that it can consume it. And with that we have our add note ready to be tested. So we can use this application to test it because it exposes Swagger which is a UI client and we can use Swagger to test our changes. So I will start the application. The application is now running and it has opened Swagger in the default browser and we can see two action methods and APIs over here. One is the notes controller which is the notes API and other one is the weather forecast controller which was given to us as part of the project scaffolding. So I will use the notes API and we have this post call which can create a new note inside the database. So I will click on that and click on try it out and you can use the editor that swagger provides us to execute a http call and as part of the title i will say this is my first note uh, let's say title and similarly for the description i will say this is my first note description and for the hex color you can uh, say this is 000 or black or let's say just white which is fff and let's execute this to see if it actually uh, saves the node into the database so i will click on the execute button the request has finished and it comes back with a 200 response and as part of the response body we have the id created for this new node with the title description and color hex as well and also the date created so we can see that this response was successful from the api let's quickly test this from the database as well so i have the notes db now and inside that i will select on the table so select top thousand rows and we should see one row created inside the notes table and this is the same one that we created from swagger so you can see our add function is now working uh, which is the create method as part of crowd so we will come back to the application and work on the next few operations the next action method that we want to create will be the get all notes method to get all the notes from the database so i will create a public i action result method and the method would be called get all notes and in here this will be the http get method and i will not define a route because when it comes to api forward slash notes it should give me all the notes by default 
so this is a get operation so there will be no uh, parameter from the from the body and as part of the result we will use the db context again to get all the nodes from the database so i will use db context dot get or dot notes dot to list and this way i will get all the lists over here so where list or let's say notes is equal to all the notes coming from the database now it is a good practice to not pass the domain model back to the outside world to the client so i will create another uh, DTO so I will expand models and I will create another DTO which will be notes and I will transform the note domain model to the note DTO model so add a new class and it will have almost the same properties as of note it can have different names if you want to but in our case we will just keep it simple and have the same properties as of the domain model so i will create this note dto and create a for each loop so that i can loop on all the notes and all the note inside the notes and create a new dto so i will say where notes dto list is equal to or we can say just notes dto is equal to new list of uh models dot dto dot note and inside this list or not inside actually uh, i will use this list and add new items so this dot add and we will say new models dot dto dot note and the id will be coming from the domain model which is the for each loop i will just put a line over here so note dot id sorry note dot id then title will be note dot title description also comes from note and basically we are just replicating all the fields back inside the dto so last one is created date or date created is coming from date created as well now this is a good practice to do so that we don't expose our domain model and we always have the freedom to change our domain model and finally when we have the notes dto defined we can return an ok response with the list of the notes dto back to the client so our get all notes method is also ready to be tested so i will start the application so the notes api now have two endpoints which is now the get endpoint as well to get all the notes i will execute this to get the notes from the database and i should get one result back so as you can see we have a 200 response as and as part of the array we only have one object uh, back so everything is working as it should now it's time to implement how to get a single note so i will stop the application and i had to make one more change and i had to explicitly say that in the add action method this note field is coming from domain models now that we have similar names we have to specify that so we have the add method we have the read or the get all notes we will create another similar one to get a single note by id so public i action result get note by id and as part of the argument i will pass the guid so guid of or the parameter name is id now we want to create this as an HTTP get method and also give it a route attribute and the route for this one would have the ID uh, we want to get the ID from the route so inside the double quotes I will specify curly braces and have the ID keyword in it so that it can map to the ID parameter over here and it has to be the same name 
and I can also make it type safe and have a constraint of type GUID so that only GUID values are being passed through to this method. Now using the DB context again, I can say DB context dot notes dot find and I can use the ID property over here in the find so I can pass the ID and capture it inside a variable. So let's say note domain object and this is coming from the database. So I will first check if this is not null. So let's say if note object is not equal to null, that means we had a value from the database, then we want to return it to the client, but we don't want to return the, the, the domain model, we want to return the DTO. So again, as before, we want to create a DTO. So where note DTO is equal to new models.dto.note and we will have the same uh, fields over here so I want to populate everything so ID is coming from and change the name to domain object so every property that was in the domain object now has been mapped inside the DTO and we can now return this DTO as part of the OK response so return OK response of note DTO now if this was not found, that means this ID was not found in the database, we want to return a bad request. And we can specify a message as well, but for this application, we just say this is a bad request. That means this ID didn't existed. With that, it's now time to test this get node by ID action method as well. So I will run my application. So now we have three action methods and we want to test this one, but we need a valid ID. Um, so let's use the get all attribute to get the ID from the database, or we could use the table itself as well. So execute that and get the ID while it's doing it because it's doing it for the first time. So we get the same ID back. Now we can give the ID to the next action method, which is get note by single ID and execute that and it has brought us the details of the note object from the database. In case this was not a valid ID, so I can change this from FF to FD, which is a valid quid. You have to check that. Uh, execute this and we will get a 400 bad request. So that means this ID did not exist in our database. So now we have created four or three methods. It's now time to create the last two methods, which is the delete and the update. So we will do the update first. So this is of the HTTP put method as per the RESTful principles. So the method would be of the verb HTTP put public I action result, or let's say update note and update note will uh, have two parameters one which will be the id and the other one will be the request object to update the note so the first one will be the same as the above so guid id and we will take the id from the route similar to how we did over here and the second parameter will be the note to update to so i will create another dto right click add a new class and I will call this update note request add it and we'll have to see what we have to update we have to update or we are allowing the user to update the title the description and the color hex we don't want the user to update the ID so that's not required and neither the date created because the application uh, doesn't want to change the date created. So only these three properties can be changed. So I will paste this in the update note request object and inside the controller, we will say this is the update note request, give it a name and 
now we can implement this action method so we will use the db context again but before that we have to first check if this note is uh, is present in the database or not and using a similar approach of how we did in the get note by id we will use the notes table to find it by id first so we will do a same thing note domain object is coming from db db context dot notes dot find with the id and we will check if note domain object is not null that means we found it we will now convert it or update this field from the values coming from the request so we can say the domain object title is the updated title so this dot title then the domain objects description is the request object dot description sorry this should be the, the existing domain object let's call it existing note so existing note title changed existing note description changed and then existing note dot color hex is also changing as per the request and these are the only three properties that have to change so i will also have an else block later on um, and this has to change too which is the if statement after the update we want to save the changes because entity framework core is already tracking these changes so we don't have to call the update uh, method again but we have to just save the changes so we'll say db context dot save changes and it will save the changes for this node in the uh, in picture after save changes we can say return the ok response and return the existing node because that already reflects the updated changes over here now if the note was not found in the database we will just return a bad response so bad request and we can say something inside the message but i'm just saying this is a bad request so we have created the update as well and let's let's test this uh, together with the delete operation so let's create the delete operation first so public i action result delete note and it will be annotated with the attribute http delete uh, the route will also take the id again so we will pass the same route as of the update and the attribute or the parameter for this method will be id so we will delete the note by id so first of all again we will check if this id exists in the database or not so we will say where existing note is equal to db context dot notes dot find by id we will say if existing note is not equal to null that means it was found we will use the db context dot notes table to remove this existing node so we will use the remove method and after that we will save the changes so db context dot save changes and otherwise we will return a bad request similar to how we did before after save changes we want to just return an ok response so meaning this response or this request was successful so we will say return ok and when it gets the 200 response back that means the application or the api deleted the uh, the note in behind the scenes so we have our five action methods defined and now it's time to test the remaining two so i will run my application so we can see the put action method which will update the id so let's get the id again which is this one and let's try it out and we also need the body it has to update to so let's say this is the updated note title and i'll say for the description this is the updated note description 
and color hex now becomes let's say 000, which is a black. So now I will execute this and it should update the existing node and should come back with a 200 success response. And the request was completed and we got the 200 success response with the updated object. Let's quickly go to the database and execute this. So we can see this is the updated node title, updated node description and the color hex also got updated. So our update method is working. I will use the same ID to also test the delete. So try it out, put the ID in here and click on execute. And it basically returns the 200 response. That means this was deleted. So our get all method should have an empty array, which is correct. And also if I refresh this, it comes back with the empty table. So we have created our notes app API and it's now time to work on the front end side of things.